Gyokuro brewing is a delicate process that can be easy to get wrong. When brewing these special tea leaves, it's important to use the right ratio of leaves to water and the right temperature. It's also important not to agitate the leaves as you pour the water in. In this video, we're going to be covering what Gyokuro tea is, how it's made, and how you can prepare it at home. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for future tea videos. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to Japanese green tea, but for this episode, we're going to focus on Gyokuro brewing specifically. Without further ado, let's get started. What is Gyokuro? Gyokuro is considered to be the most sought-after leaf tea in Japan. The leaves are carefully grown, selected, and processed to produce this super flavorful infusion. The flavor of Gyokuro is described as being sweet and savory. This strong, savory flavor is quite unique in the world of tea and something you will usually only experience in a food, like a hearty bowl of miso soup. The savory flavor comes from the strong presence of amino acids in the leaf. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein, so it makes sense that they can create a flavor that is normally associated with protein-rich foods. Different varieties or cultivars of tea plants have different levels of amino acids, which gives them their completely different flavors. The Gyokuro Cha Meijin, for example, which comes from the Saimidori cultivar, has a light and warm sweetness, with notes of brown sugar and caramel. The Gyokuro Cha Musume, on the other hand, comes from the Yabukita cultivar, and it has much more of a direct savory flavor. The History of Gyokuro The history of Gyokuro can be traced back to this spot in Okura, a small town nearby Uji. Uji has been the major hub of premium tea cultivation in Japan since the 1400s, and some would argue that it still is today. The most common type of tea produced in Japan during the 1500s and 1600s was matcha, a type of powdered tea that was popularized through its use in the tea ceremony. This tea was quite expensive and mostly consumed by the upper classes. Tea producers began experimenting with teas that could be prepared more simply, with only the most basic of utensils. A tea farmer named Nagatani Soen found that by steaming, rolling, and drying the tea leaves, you could lock in the flavor so it can be released all at once in a beautiful, flavorful infusion. Soon, another tea producer named Yamamoto Kahe came along with his contribution to the industry. After traveling around Japan, he found farmers that would cover their tea plants to protect them from the cold. They noticed that this produced a smoother and sweeter tasting tea. He applied this concept to his own tea and found that the long shaded tea leaves produced a green residue during the production process. He nicknamed the tea Gyokuro, or Jade Dew. How is Gyokuro made? What makes Gyokuro so special is its long and careful production process. This involves three specific phases of growing, harvesting, and processing. Gyokuro tea farmers like Mr. Sakamoto work tirelessly to produce incredible teas like the Gyokuro Sasahime and the Gyokuro Cha Meijin and it all starts with how the tea is grown. Gyokuro is grown in a similar way to any other Japanese green tea, except for one factor, and that is the shading. When the tea plant is exposed to sunlight, it begins to convert sweet and savory theanine into more bitter catechins as a protection against the UV light. This might be a good protection for the leaf, but catechins produce a bitter flavor in the final tea. If the farmer wants to produce a tea that's as sweet as Gyokuro, they will have to cover the plant with netting for at least three weeks before the harvest. This shading minimizes the content of catechins in the tea and allows it to maintain more of its sweet and savory flavor. After three weeks or more of shading, the tea plant is ready to be harvested. The first harvest usually occurs either in April or May. The reason that premium Japanese green teas have to come from the first harvest is that these leaves contain the highest concentration of nutrients. The tea plant is not harvested during winter, so it has many months to rest and build up nutrients from the soil. These nutrients are then released all at once into the fresh sprouts in the springtime. Only the top three leaves are selected to make gyokuro. These are the smoothest and sweetest in flavor and they have the most caffeine as well. The processing of gyokuro is similar to most other Japanese green teas. The leaves are gathered up after they've been harvested and then they are steamed, rolled, and dried. What makes gyokuro tea unique and a factor that influences the gyokuro tea brewing is the shape of the tea leaves. While sencha leaves tend to be slightly flatter, gyokuro leaves are tightly rolled into these needle shapes. This requires an extra stage of the production process where the tea leaves are rolled with a series of brushes to give them their distinct shape. The reason this affects the gyokuro tea brewing is that these Tightly rolled leaves need a full two minutes to open up and release their flavor into the water. This is longer than the standard brewing time for Japanese green tea, one minute. Now that we know a little bit about what gyokuro is, let's talk about how to brew it. In this gyokuro tea brewing guide, we're going to take you through the process of gyokuro brewing step by step. Let's get started. Step one, measure out five grams of leaves and place them into the bottom of your kyusu or shibori dashi teapot. Step two, now you can pour in 150 milliliters of water at a temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. As you pour, make sure to not pour directly on top of the leaves as this will agitate them and release slightly more bitterness. Step three, put the lid of the teapot on to keep the tea warm and let it sit undisturbed for two minutes. Step four, 
After the Gyokuro brewing is complete, it's time to pour out your tea. Make sure you do this very gently so that you don't agitate the leaves, but once the pouring stops, you can shake out the last few drops. Why does Gyokuro brewing require cooler water? The reason Gyokuro brewing requires such cool water is that you really want to extract these sweet and savory flavors of the tea without extracting any of the bitterness. The bitter catechins of the tea are extracted at a higher temperature, so as long as you keep your Gyokuro tea brewing on the cooler side, you will be able to enjoy a smooth and savory cup of tea. One Gyokuro brewing method you might be familiar with is using more leaves and less water. This is a method you will see at high-end tea shops in Japan, and it really can produce a special cup of Gyokuro tea. Although Gyokuro tea can be a tea you drink every day, it's also meant to be a tea for special occasions. For these occasions, you often will drink Gyokuro out of these very small cups. When you drink super concentrated tea in small quantities like this, you're not only meant to savor the taste, but also the texture as it glides over the top of your tongue, drop by drop. This Gyokuro brewing method uses 5 grams of leaves and only 50 milliliters of water. This creates a dense, flavorful infusion that has almost a gel-like or oily texture. This is unlike any tea experience you've had, and it really makes for a special moment. The best teapot for Gyokuro brewing. If you would like to try this special Gyokuro brewing method, the best way to do it is to use the Shibori Dashi teapot. This teapot has a wide, flat base to it, which allows the leaves to expand without being cramped on top of one another. The name translates to squeeze out, which is a good way to describe the method of Gyokuro tea brewing, as you are really maximizing the flavor into a smaller Space. You can find these Shibori Dashi teas on our website, neoteas.com. The teapots are handmade in Tokonami, the most famous region for clay pottery. This region also produces the best quality clay for teapots, with low porosity and heat conductivity. I hope you've all enjoyed this guide on Gyokuro brewing. When it comes to brewing a cup of Gyokuro tea, make sure that you keep the brewing temperature low, the steeping time long, and if you would really like to level up your tea experience, you can use a higher leaf to water ratio. If you would like to support this channel, it would really mean a lot to us if you could head to our website and try some excellent quality Gyokuro green tea. During our travels to Japan, we have met with dozens of farmers and sampled many different types of Gyokuro teas. The teas produced by Mr. Sakamoto are the best we've found, and we're happy to share them with people all around the world. Try them out for yourself, and you can start brewing delicious cups of Gyokuro tea in your very own home. Another way to support this channel is by subscribing to our YouTube channel and leaving a like if you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about Gyokuro or about green tea in general, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.